Hi, I'm Chris, and today on Curzy Fabrications, I have yet another Ender 5 upgrade for you. I'm going to be replacing the stock PTFE Bowden tube with a Capricorn PTFE tube that should improve the stringing uh, and the retractions on your 3D prints. Does it work? Will we actually see an improvement? Let's go find out here on Curzy Fabrications. one thing I found on the Ender 5 3D printer is when I print multiple parts on the print bed or when I have a print that actually has a lot of components that are kind of separated uh, on that particular print, I still get a lot of stringing, uh, you know, as it jumps around. And one thing I'd like to do is try to get rid of that stringing. So I spent the last 24 hours or so uh, doing test prints and I've got data here that basically goes through and I change different settings of the print. I go through first changing the temperature, making sure I have the right temperature for the filament. I have changed retraction distance. I have also changed the retraction speed uh, to try to tune the stock Bowden tube, Bowden tube, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna go with Bowden for now. Um, to see if I can get this tuned to where it will not do any stringing. And in particular, when I uh, do a lot of retractions. I actually like to turn on what's called Z-Hop. And what that does is it keeps the print head, the, the tip of the nozzle, from actually uh, scraping the print as it travels or knocking something free. Uh, particularly if you're doing a lot of uh, multi-part uh, prints where you have different things on the bed, this is uh, particularly important. You know, as people will tell you, if you have the printer dialed in perfectly, you don't have to worry about that or you shouldn't have to worry about that because it should never scrape the print. As we know, these tools are not perfect. Getting everything dialed in just right is, is sometimes very difficult. So I think that that Z-Hop setting is very important. And with Z-Hop, you don't always get the sort of, the, the cleaning that occurs to the tip of your, your, your extruder that can get rid of that extra leaking filament. And so if you don't have that, uh, you can get a lot of stringing. So as I said, I have a lot of test prints here. I'm gonna be showing them on the screen um, where I've, I've done like seven different test prints to try to tune uh, the, the, the filament, the printer exactly right for this filament. I have been using um, some Z uh, Ziltec gray filament for this testing. Uh, this is something they sent to me for testing. This is one of their new colors. And um, it's printing great at 200 degrees uh, Celsius now. And uh, after the data I'll show you, I've settled on a retraction of six millimeters and a retraction speed of 55 millimeters per second. And uh, with that, I was able to dial it in pretty well, but unfortunately not able to get rid of all the stringing. I'll provide a link to the test print that I'm using in the description. This is one of the um, you know, most brutal sort of retraction test that I've been able to find. Since I haven't been able to really dial that in perfectly, at least not for my particular use, my particular filament, what I wanted to do, I uh, ordered some of this Capricorn PTFE tube off of Amazon, and I'll provide the link to that as well. And what we'll do is we're gonna replace this. I'll show you how quick and easy this is. And I'll also show you once I get the original PTFE tube off, I'll show you why upgrading to this tube matters and actually what you'll be getting. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do in this process is we need to get the filament that's already in the printer out. So I'm gonna heat up the hot end and then we'll be able to pull out the existing filament. While that's heating up, I'm actually going to use this time to go ahead and remove the hot, the uh, fan shroud on the hot end. Uh, this may actually not completely be necessary, but I think getting it out of the way is actually gonna make things easier. And looks like every other video I dropped it. All right, the fan shroud is removed. So now I can get to all this here. And the nozzle's up to temperature. All right, let's remove the existing uh, bone tube. I have to remove the clips, which I have printed for mine. And if you haven't printed these clips, 
I uh, definitely recommend you get some. These are available on Thingiverse. I can also provide the link for those. They're great uh, because they keep the tube from sliding in out by making sure that these uh, couplers are locked in place. So I've got one on each end. And just pull off. Okay, so let's get these tubes should come out. If we're able to push down the nozzle far enough. If not, much like in my other video, we're actually going to have to just unscrew this one. Let's see if we can get the one off of this end though. There we go. The reason these don't pull out sometimes correctly is because they get a groove in the, uh, the tube and that actually tries to hold it in. So I got that one off. This one's just not going to come. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to get off this extra filament down here. Keep in mind the hot end is still hot. And what I want to do before we actually cool this down, I'm going to use my socket wrench to loosen the hot end. All right, so now that will come off easily. And if you remember last time, you'll need to back this off just a little bit. Since the tube didn't want to come out without removing this, I'm going to just loosen this up at this point. Once you get it loose, you should be able to pull that out. Now, this one's gunked up. I had not pulled mine down, so it's smoking as you can see. This should now pull off. There's nothing pushing up against it. Okay, save this. We're going to put that back on. And you can actually go ahead and tighten this back down at this point. All right. Now, without removing any of the zip ties, I believe this is just going to pull out of here and pull out of here. All right, now we can use this length of tube to cut the new one to the correct length. So here is the Capricorn tubing that I received uh, from Amazon. It did come with an official sticker. Hopefully that means this is actually an official product. And here is what we're looking at the difference in these. Hopefully I can get a good shot on these. If you'll notice, it's really the diameter of these tubes that makes a huge difference. The inner diameter of the Capricorn tubing is much tighter, has much uh, tighter tolerances, and therefore when it's doing retractions, it will make sure that the filament doesn't have as much wiggle room. It's where the filament will have a much tighter path, therefore your retractions are a lot cleaner. So what we're going to do, we're, as I said, we're going to have to cut this tube to length. First thing I'd like to do is I printed this wonderful guide that we can use to cut straight lines in our tube. So I'm going to actually insert this into the end of here, just far enough to where I can get me a new cut. Once it's been inserted, I can take my knife, go straight down. Now I can be assured that this is a perfectly straight cut. Now I'm going to use my original tube to measure for length to start it on one end. Once we get to this end, we can again insert the trimming tool. This is before. Take our knife, make sure we cut a straight cut. All right. Now our two tube links should be the same. What we'll also do is when we get this on the printer, we can actually verify that this tube is optimal length because you really actually do want these tubes as short as possible uh, to help your retractions. So let's go add this back to the printer. So adding it back to the printer is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna do everything in reverse that we did to begin with. And I think the easiest way to do it is I'm going to try to insert these back into the tie wraps like the previous tube was. So one thing I just remembered because that wasn't going to plan, it actually did come with tie wraps, at least my printer did, came with some replacement tie wraps. So I want to save myself a little bit of headache. I'm actually going to cut these tie wraps off because they weren't going in as easy as I thought they would. I'm going to just cut those. There's two of them. And then I'm going to take this, go ahead and insert it back into this one. 
which is on the extruder end. I'm going to take my little clip, put it back in. Then I can just run this back along. Now to find out what I meant earlier, to find out if this is actually the right length or if it's optimal length, we actually take the extruder, or excuse me, the hot end, move it to the most extreme case for this printer, which is going to be here. And we're gonna see, is that, could that be any shorter? And I think it's pretty clear that no, if we were to make it any shorter, then we would actually uh, end up kinking this tube, which we don't wanna do. So I'm gonna leave it the length that I cut it. And if you remember from the last video, if you saw the last upgrade video where I upgraded the hot end, what we do here is we're gonna just insert it. We need to push it firmly in and it should go all the way down and that should go all the way down to the hot end. And so once that's all, all the way inserted in, my hot end is still heated up and then we can tighten this back down, which is actually going to push this against that tube. And we need this to be a good solid seal because this is actually uh, the path that the filament goes in and if this is loose you'll get some overrun. So I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit. Don't tweak too hard. This is attached and can be broken. So we're going to put it back together. Again be very careful. The hot end is still hot. Don't put your finger underneath it. Burn yourself. Once that's reconnected, we're going to do just as we did on the other end. We're going to reinsert our clip to make sure that that's tight. If, you notice, if I pull up on this, because this clip has been inserted, we don't have to worry about any movement. And then all we have to do is reattach the zip ties. Again, mine came with a couple of extras. If not, I'm sure you can find some either that came with something else in your house or at your local hardware store. We're just going to put that pretty tight. Same thing here. Put one basically back in the positions they were about a third and two thirds on the cable. Tighten that back down. Use our snips to cut away the excess. And we can do a quick test. Make sure the printer moves correctly. Make sure it goes to the extremes without any problems. No problems here. Now we're actually ready to run that stringing test with the new tube. We're going to leave our settings exactly where they were before as we uh, run this first test to see how it does. Let's get to printing. So here's the first completed print after doing the Capricorn upgrade. As you can see, there's quite a bit of stringing still, but it's a lot thinner and wispier than the stringing that was left over before. So it's an improvement. Uh, it's not a drastic improvement. It doesn't get rid of the, the stringing altogether. So we're gonna play with a few more settings and see how much we can uh, still clean up on this print. So in this one, I increased both the retraction speed as well as the travel speed in order to try to break off these little wisps. Doesn't seem to really change much compared to the previous run. So I'm gonna do the opposite on the next one and then reduce my retraction speed to like 15 millimeters per second to see if that'll help. So as you can see here, the uh, slower retraction speeds definitely appears better. It's still not great, um, but it appears better than the fast retraction speeds. So I uh, don't know what else to do at this point, to be honest. So I'm actually going to do one last test where I use these settings since they're marginally, I think, better than the original ones I was using. And I'm going to actually turn off Z hop and see if by turning off Z-Hop, if I get a relatively clean print and see how much that helps. That'll be my final print before wrapping this one up. So here we are with the final print. This is the one with Z-Hop turned off, like I said. And I think you'll notice here, we've almost gotten rid of all of the stringing at this point. If you see that you're really not getting any stringing at this point, except for on the peaks of this print. And that's because that's where there's no place to wipe the nozzle before you continue on to the next peak. So uh, what this means for real life prints, of course, is that any place where you're just touching down and then moving on, you might still get some stringing, but 
normally, as long as there's a place for it to do a wipe of the nozzle before it leaves and you're not using Z-Hop, um, then you should, should still be all right. So uh, let's wrap this up and I'll tell you what's coming next. So where does that leave us on the Capricorn TV? Well, I would have to say that it does help. How much it helps, I think, is it really depends on the quality of the tube that you got with your original printer. Uh, on mine, the tube seems to have been pretty good that it came with. Uh, I did notice some differences in the quality, as you saw, when going directly from the tube that it came with to the Capricorn, there was a uh, noticeable difference in the print. So, you know, this is a roughly $10, $12 upgrade. It's probably going to be worth it for most people. To be honest, I wasn't even sure I was going to do a review on this because it's such a simple upgrade. But, you know, I've considered this Ender 5 project a journey that I've been on with you. And I've got another major upgrade for this printer coming up. And I wanted to make sure that I, I stepped through it. And I also wanted to make sure that before the next upgrade that this printer was printing as good as it possibly could. Uh, given a fairly stock setup with just a few upgraded parts. Um, haven't upgraded the main board yet, of course. I actually have that coming. That's coming from Creality. There is a uh, new V1.1.4 uh, board that's coming out that's on its way to me. Uh, the next major upgrade I've got, I'll go ahead and give you a teaser of. These are linear rails. This is an adapter set that I've made for it and that will be coming up as the next Ender 5 upgrade. We're gonna see if there's noticeable difference or what potential advantages there could be from upgrading to linear rails on this printer. Uh, I'll also be releasing my files for this, of course, so that people can uh, you know, follow along with me and give this a shot as well. So thanks for everyone for joining me today. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe, please like this video. Leave me comments on sort of the methodology that I had here. If you have anything that I may have missed or anything that I possibly could uh, try to dial this in even better, I will. I'm also going to release the Cura profile that I'm currently using for my printer so that other people can test it out, make tweaks to it, share it again with the community. So you'll find that link in the description below. I appreciate everyone for joining me. This has been Kersey Fabrications. Thanks, everybody. Oh, and I wanted to give a big shout out to Ivan Miranda. This t-shirt's from his channel. Uh, if you like project videos and you are unfamiliar with Ivan's channel, please go take a look. He does excellent projects with 3D printing, uh, everything from giant tanks to uh, robots that draw on the beach. Again, if you enjoy this kind of content, if you join Maker content, go check out his channel uh, and tell him hi for me. Thanks, everybody.